This is Libna Tijani, and I'm Tony Fish. Uh, we, we do something called Alternet, and we very much believe in, in a lot of what's been talked about today in human-centric um, um, power of data, which is fundamental. Uh, Lubna and I are unfortunately uh, both mavericks, pioneers, and authors. And what we wanted to do is provide a viewpoint that builds on what Kalia's done. Uh, and I, she didn't really say this, but the report is available to be purchased. Uh, and you can purchase her skills and expertise as well, because she's very modest and she won't actually sell herself particularly, and has spent the last I would say three years doing the report and the last 15 years building everything else up, and it's fantastic. But, um, uh, Lubna. Um, hi, everyone, and thank you for sticking around and for having me here. Um, uh, if nothing else, we, we want to emphasize how critical it is um, today to um, create meaningful human experiences, not only for the success of our businesses, but for the quality of life at large. And hopefully by the end of this, the few minutes we'll be spending with you, we'll leave you with a lot more questions um, to ponder with amongst yourselves and over drinks in a few minutes. Slides. Oh yes, we will not have any slides. <laughs> Best thing, we are the slides. Uh, Lubna, I'm going to ask you a question, and this is the format that we'll have. Um, how would you sum up the current status of the data industry, and what do you think the problem is? Hmm. A yogi friend of mine, and I didn't go to yoga last night, I should have, um, once said to me, you are the problem and you are the solution. Um, many of us here are technologists, I think, and over the last 20 to 30 years, we've developed a great dependency uh, on our digital realm. I don't know if any of you imagine if you wake up in the morning and all things digital vanish. Uh, but with that dependency, um, many of the companies that we have uh, come to rely on have grown big, fat, and uh, bursting with leaks. Um, <laughs> data leaks. Um, the data that uh, we've entrusted in, with them. And, and with those leaks and all that bursting that's happening at the seams, it has raised, risen the awareness of people to not only the value of their data, but to the problem that is becoming uh, quite evident, so much so that now Mr. Regular, regulator has, has stepped into the picture with things like GDPR, which is also uh, becoming more and more uh, looked at and being adopted in the States as well. Um, the good news here, because there's, we are the problem and we are the solution, is there's been a, this echo chamber, and Tony loves to talk about echo chambers and, and this model we, we often use to describe, but the echo chamber happens to be here, um, where we have, uh, many of us here have spent the last 20 years thinking about exactly those things, exactly how do you put the, the user at the heart of, of, of the service, giving them control over their data, and control doesn't necessarily mean that they become liable, control means the choice to, to do what they, um, what they will uh, with their data. Um, keeping the uh, user experience, again, really critical. Um, so, but I'll, I, I want to pass it to you, Tony, to talk a little bit more about uh, about that, and you tell me what, what uh, do you agree about the? the yeah, uh, as a model that we've been working on is there's there's three stages um, as businesses come or, or industries come to market. And the first is the echo chamber, which which Lubna referred to, which is so critical, and it's it's why you know. Um, uh, Parks um, sat on, on, a, on a bus and managed to change people's views of, of, of segmentation and, and why Martin Luther King stood up. And you need people who create passion and will stand up for doing things that are right. And that's what you know, this, this, this huge gathering is, is all about. It's driven by passion. And that passion comes through. And, but there is a focus, enormous focus on technology. And as we move from the echo chamber to create a movement, and the movement is where we hear that first word in, in the, the presentation this morning, multidisciplinary. And suddenly you're adding law and you're starting to talk ethics and AI. And suddenly you realize this isn't just about an echo chamber and a technology, it's actually a movement. There's people out there. And listening to some of the presentations, we've heard that you know, people want to do things, but we haven't quite got the, the, the tools yet to do them. Um, but what we want to get to is a market. And it's a self-sustaining market, a market that exists. So we want to go from the echo chamber through movement um, uh, to a, a self-sustaining market. But to get there, 
which is where Lubna started from, we've got to get back to talking about user experience. Because that's the thing, that's the way the rubber's going to hit the road, and it's where you, the, um, Kalia starts to talk about. This stuff has to impact real life, um, which is going to go forward. So we yeah, want to talk about that some of that. Yeah, we? and a bit, the, the good news is with all the, the pressure that's been, uh, with all the leaks and what have you, it is, it's what's, um, what's creating this, what's enabling the burst out of, uh, from, from an echo chamber into a movement where the work that Kalia and many of you here have, have, have invested the last 20 or years uh, working on. So there, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a good so, thing. So we know the tools aren't good enough. We know the user experience is not building trust. It's actually probably destroying a bit of trust and we're not protecting the user. Um, however, what we have is an industry which is basically, we've heard several times today, is based on advertising. Because <laughs> it's our money. It's where it comes from. And it's the, it is the oil, effectively, that is, is lubricating uh, everything that's going forward. So, so Luna, do you want to share a few views on how this hits advertising and some of the changes? <laughs> um, the only knows I have my uh, deep feelings about, about the ad industry, which is, uh, in itself is, is quite uh, ready for disruption. Uh, but but it, it, it's true that the ad dollars is what, what drives uh, companies that have hold our data to, to um, exploit it and, and sell it um, uh, for, for the benefit of the brands that are buying it. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with personalization or targeting or understanding consumer behavior. Um, but the way we do it and, and, uh, and, and uh, how and why we do it is, is, is what needs to change. And uh, Today's models are, I think, are quite um, um, short-sighted, exploitative, parasitic, and obscure. Uh, and we need to move to, to more of a transparent value creation and value exchange model. Um, which brings us all the way back to, to what, you know, the, the um, framework that Kalia has spent the last uh, minutes with you describing, uh, where we can, uh, but we have to, again, re-emphasize that we need to shift our focus on, on how do we create meaningful experience that enable people to, to take part uh, in, in, in the monetization. It's imp I want to be targeted for my... Uh, if I have a, a, an ailment or if I'm in the market for something, I, I'm happy to, to receive that information. I, I, I want to, but it needs to be something that I'm engaged with. It, it can't just be um, um, harvested and sold for, for, for the benefit of, of uh, those who I had originally entrusted to look after my interests. But so people have to have uh, the... A, a say in how, when, where, why, with whom, for what purpose their data is being used. Um, and I'm going to ask, uh, maybe, uh, Tony, you want to talk a little bit more about um, um, transparency. The transparency and yeah. we, we have this, this Liboni character we often talk about, but Tony loves to talk about Liboni. I didn't know about Liboni. Oh, Liboni. oh you should ask it, it, Tony. The later. Liboni is the third person sitting up here at the moment. So, <laughs> 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 um, so, so we built a character, and the character, uh, for want of describing something, um, it, it is a person who has a Facebook profile, and, and actually they do have a Facebook profile. And the reason for creating this person is because to articulate and understand the two relationships they have with Facebook, and one of the problems as an industry, we've got to sort our way through. So on one side, our little fictional character, Laboni, has a relationship with a service, and the service is called Facebook. And Facebook has empowered you under this idea of giving you consent and giving you preferences and says, if you fill in and, and tick these various boxes, you have control. And th then you can share your data and then they forget to tell you that your, user, your friends can go off and share it even worse and farther and wider and they, they don't quite really give you preferences and consent and control. But you have this relationship with the service. So that's one of the sides Laboni has. But Laboni also has this second relationship with Facebook, which is when you log in, and it's, it's not just Facebook, it's Google, it's Apple, it's Amazon, it's all of them. It, what you do is you have to go, I accept, I agree, whatever the phrase is. And it, it's not consent, you, you have no choice. If you want to use the service, you have to tick this box. And that then becomes a relationship with a platform. And the platform then takes your data and enables other people, in Facebook's case, to access your data and therefore position ads to you. 
And what we were desperately lacking is not on one side this idea of preferences and control, which they carry on sort of mirroring over and plastering and telling you how wonderful it is. There's just no transparency on the other side. Who they have relationships with, what type of relationships they have. And as an industry, if, if you want to go back to an echo chamber and what things we need to get moving on to solve the next part of the problem, and come back to Lubna's point about different business models, is we've got to find a way to deliver transparency. We, we shouldn't go and knock on Facebook store and go, please do it. We do it as an industry. We take the leadership position. We show that we're capable of actually bringing these new models around. Did you want to comment at all on anything on that? Yeah, I, I think we need to stop um, using um, the I agree and saying that, oh yes, we've consented to obscure the, our business models. We, we do absolutely, uh, and, and not hide behind pretending that we've given you, we, you've, we've gotten your consent and that we've uh, been uh, forthright by giving you preference. Because I, I think when, when I agree, I think it's my preferences that's being set, that I'm agreeing to and delivering the service. And I, I think <coughs> if, if we can establish models that are that uh, new economic models where the, in, the, the, the individual at least has the choice to be to take part in, in, in that um, in the monetization process. So we've got a just a couple of takeaways. And do you want to? Start or shall I start? We New economic rest. models. New value economics. creation rather than value extraction. And my, my first takeaway is uh, one of the things we've got to do as well as an industry is start to celebrate success, but not as an individual company and going, look, I've solved a problem that actually, um, and even looking at the, the sponsors of here from, from my data to Miko to what Katrina's doing with, uh, with some of the consent stuff, to Sovereign and, and listening to, to some of the bits that have gone on there, to Mydex, to Citizen Me, to DigiMe, to Cozy Cloud, <laughs> to Traffic, some of the pronunciations of the Finnish companies who have sponsored this event, I won't even attempt to do, and I <laughs> apologize, uh, to Concentric, to My Digital. It's not that we should do these on our own. As an industry, we should celebrate them because we're not quite out of the echo chamber into the movement, and as a movement, we should celebrate everything the movement's doing because we're not there at a market. And so then it then becomes even that much more critical that we um, put the user first. So there was a time when people said, who needs a dot-com? Then we thought, nobody needs a mobile. So, and then we went to mobile first. Well, user experience first. If we design our services and our applications from a usability perspective, not how am I going to get the most out of it for myself, what am I going to how can I get the most money, what do I charge, it's how do I create value for my user. If we think about that and how do I make it simple and easy, I, I say it, it, we have to funify it and uh, lubnify it, which is dumber than dumb I say, if <laughs> it should just be intuitive, simple and the money will follow. I promise. Uh, my last takeaway, and then Lubna, I think, has got one more, which is um, we've got to find a way um, to deliver transparency. And, and some of the stuff that's coming through Self Sovereign and did is fantastic because we can actually start to put stuff in public blockchains and deliver better transparency. And within that, we've got to find better governance structures. And, and again, it's not criticizing other people. We've got to take the blockchain technologies and apply it to ourselves and use that technology to deliver our own governance and our own transparency. And that's how we're going to create change. Not by asking others to do it, by doing it our very selves first. And then celebrating when somebody does it beautifully. I'm big on this taxonomy. We, we need to... Um, very often we talk about things and uh, we're using the same words, but we're meaning something very different. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll invite us to start with coming up with a unified de definition for consent uh, <laughs> and, uh, and being very transparent about what we mean when we're getting consent. And consent, including the def defining the duration, apl applicability, etc., etc., etc. I don't want to preach to the choir. And thank you so much for your time. Yes, I want to go ahead. There's a collection of questions that I want to get to for the three of you nice. um, that I have highlighted that, once again, I've grouped because I think that they actually make sense. Um, so 
I think it all comes down to something that you all are pointing to, which is that something like a DID or self-sovereign identity could solve a lot of problems, but a lot of it will come down to usability and user experience. And the companies that have proven really good at designing these kind of seamless working services are people like Google and Apple and Facebook. Um, so there's a question, what happens when Google or Apple offers a pseudo SSI wallet and grab 90% of the market? Um, how do we still prevent some of the bigger companies that already have these data troves from being able to link things together even when we're trying to keep things decentralized? Yeah. Um, and a question that is also somewhat of a statement, which is why does my data not welcome designers? Which, interesting that people feel that way and something I guess should be dug into. Um, but it's clear that DIDs are good, but they'll live or die by their design and UX. Yep. So I was wondering if you could comment on this idea of how to make this kind of thing usable, and do you think it's something that some of the bigger players are going to come in and do first? So I'm going to let them answer that no, no, piece of the question. No, no, we're going to let you go but, first. <laughs> um, there is an answer to a piece of this, which is actually I think we need to follow the model of the um, open source OSI, um, so Open Source Institute, I think that's what the I stands for, um, initiative, open source initiative. They um, formed an organization and they own the term open source and they made a definition and they went after anybody who used the term open source that wasn't. And I think we need to do this for SSI. We need to get the term, make a clear definition and if you aren't using open standards, you aren't doing SSI. And, and, and we need to um, use the power that we have um, in uh, copy copyright and trademark law to enforce it. So we don't have things by large companies that, aren't, that say they're SSI but are not. Uh, Design. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> one, I suppose one of the joys in the last um, few years is that the, the Kodak vanished, Nokia vanished, and the, the burning memo platforms that everybody saw uh, doing the rounds of the internet, and everyone comes back to all oh, these big companies are just going to swoop in. And the reason they vanished is because the model changed. And one of the joys we've got as a community is we can change the model. And we can change the model by actually doing governance beautifully. We can change the model by do it, getting consent absolutely right. We can change the model by doing fantastic, beautiful user experiences and then coming back and say, let's create that value exchange. And if we do those things as a community and celebrate them, we're not going to have 90% whizzing over to Google because they're not going to be able to change. So we will have another series of companies writing burning memo platforms going, how did this happen? Yeah. So 15 I, years ago, none of the, these, the, the, the FANG, it didn't even exist today. I'm going to go ahead and ask one more question and then we'll wrap up. Uh, don't forget, I'm going to ask you all to do the second part of the Delta poll and there's a reception from 5.30 to 7. So this is the last one and I'm only asking it because I'm feeling a little spicy. It's the end of the day. Uh, when I was doing the podcast interviews, we asked, is there anything that we shouldn't talk about? And yes. the only <laughs> most common consistent answer I got was Brexit. And so one of the first things, one of the first questions that came up that got probably the most upvotes is, is self-sovereign identity like Brexit for, but for identity? So let's just what? go ahead and <laughs> we got, we got to throw it on everybody the table. Respond. <laughs> what and does that Brett, so I go even last. mean? I think it's saying like yeah. is it kind of like an opt out from current existing systems? Oh. Like is it just people trying to be like anti-establishment? Oh, I guess. Oh, okay. So <laughs> one of the challenges with SSI is like the name, right? Like apparently governments don't like it. <laughs> Um, so I've had conversation in the last couple of weeks with folks who are like, can you give me an ex a pair, like an example of an SSI system functioning with an existing system? And I think the province of British Columbia is where you go to see that. They're really looking at, at, at giving all of their citizens SSI identities that come from the province. Like they're issuing a digital version of their citizen services card using SSI. So uh, I don't... Think, I think the answer is no, but I don't quite understand the question. Do is it like me? Brexit? Um, so to, to, to my simple response is, as the Brit, uh, no, because 
it it's very on simple. If you like Brexit uh, or not. They, 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 some people turned up at our country and they said, um, "We're not going to inform you about what we're going to ask for. We're not really going to tell you the question. We're not going to tell you the outcome. We're not going to tell you the consequences. And by the way, none of it's traceable." So kind of like SSI comes along, and if we'd had it, we would have been able to have information and traceability and everything else, and it would have been wonderful. So SSI and Brexit are completely different. And by the way, I didn't vote for it. <laughs> Please forgive us. We're stupid. Okay. Please give a warm <laughs> round of applause for our panelists. The Delta poll is now up. Uh, now to round off. Now, how well do you th how well do you think you understand the concept of self-sovereign identity or SSI? Let's see if we see rates of change. All right. I think there's a definitive movement to I get the concept. Uh, yes. Go ahead, and if you want some people who are thinking and talking about things that you are interested in to eat dinner with, uh, go ahead and take the time to go to mydata2018.org slash social, sign up for a dinner at different restaurants around the lovely city of Helsinki, um, reception from 5.30 to 7, and we will be back here tomorrow at 9 a.m. for a keynote from Mika Hoopinen that I, for one, am really looking forward to. So we'll see you all then. Thank Thanks you. All.